Welcome to Fusion 360 Tutorials. In this video, we will cover some simple tips or tricks to help you complete this animated piston and cylinder assembly. When your assembly is complete, you should be able to rotate your wheel and that will cause the piston to move linearly in and out of the cylinder as you can see. And a quick tip, if you are in a position, if you have moved from your default assembly, you can always click up here to position and select revert, and that will bring it back to your assembled position. When you're building your assembly, you may want to start with the biggest part, which would be the base, and model that part first, and then create an assembly model and start importing the parts into your model as you build them. In this case, you would probably build the base first and then the support, bearings, axle, wheel, etc. You may also want to, at the same time, create your drawing and then and add your parts list. And then you can actually verify as you're building each part that you have got the correct part number, description, material, etc. As you are building your individual parts, such as the piston, take a few minutes to think about how you're going to proceed with each of these features. You can't do this all in one sketch, all in one feature, so think about it logically. Uh, you may want to build this piston feature first, uh, then maybe the shaft, maybe the end. Um, look at these or treat these as three different parts or components while you're building these. So don't look at the drawing and see this as a whole thing and try and think you're going to do this in one sketch or one extrusion. This is feature based modeling. So you're going to model each feature at a time. Important reminder when you're doing or working with um, circular or cylindrical features, always consider the the revolution command an option to consider while you're building your your whole assembly is to create each um, or add each joint as a fixed joint and then you can modify the the the, re, the revolute joints after the fact prior to doing the animation we have to do a motion study and set up the distance, translational or rotational distances that we want our components to move. So we're going to go up to assemble and we're going to select motion study. And this dialog box will pop up. And based on our design, I'm just going to expand this a bit as much as I can. Based on our components, what we want to do is we want to turn this wheel. So what we're going to do is we're going to it says select the joints to animate. So we're going to go into our joints and we're going to select the rotational joint that we want to rotate. So we want this axle to rotate. So I have named my joints in here so I know which one to choose. Um, this is the axle joint here and it isn't really named properly should be called axle but you will see that that curve has popped up in the menu down here if i was to add another one say select the piston then you would get another line in here so i'm just going to undo that go back up to motion study and going to select my uh, axle and that has added that to the motion study what we have here is we have 100 frames so this is frame 0 here and this is frame 100 here and we can put points through here 20 40 60 80 frame 80 frames we can select where we want that to be at a certain frame so what you probably want to do is decide how many rotations you want to do so if you did two rotations that would be 360 times 2 which would be 720 if you want to do more rotations then you're going to multiply that number of rotations by 360 degrees so if i wanted to do eight rotations it's going to be a total of 
2880 degrees but I want to make that a nice smooth animation so I probably want to divide that up either by 20 divide it by 4 and put my points at frame 25 50 75 100 or I could divide it by 5 and just keep the 20 keep the frames at 20 40 60 keep the points there so I'm going to divide mine so I'm going to use 360 times the 8 which would be 2880 that would be my finish point and my starting point would be 0 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that into 4 so and I'm going to put a, a, a location at 25 frames 50 frames and 75 frames and 100 frames so along this line I'm going to select randomly so my 25 shows up here and I will select that if it did not show up perfect you can change that to 25 there and at 25 I'm going to put the rotation that I want in there so it was 2880 that's how many degrees I want and I'm going to divide that by 4 and that's going to give me 720 frames 720 degrees so I'm going to put 720 degrees in there and I can click outside of there and you can see so now it is starting at zero and at 25 frames it is at 720 degrees so I'm going to go up to my 50 degree point and now I'm going to add another 720 to that which would be 1440 select enter and then I'm going to go up to my 75 degrees or my 75 frames select on there and I'm going to add another 720 and that's going to give me a total of 2160 and on my last one here at 100 see then select 100 there but I'm going to put 100 in there and it is going to be 2880 and now I should see a nice smooth linear curve so at 25 frames it is going to have turned 720 degrees at 50 it would have turned 1440 degrees and 75 frames it would be 2160 degrees so I can just save that or just hit OK and close that and you'll notice up in motion studies it has created a folder here and I'm just going to rename I'm going to I'm going to name this. I'm going to call this 720 degrees just means that each step was 720 degrees. Depending how fast you want it to move, you may want it to move slower, so you're going to have to determine that. I'm going to use 720. So I'm going to save my file so I don't lose my motion study. And our animation is going to be based on that motion study. So when we go to do the animation it's not the same as the animation that we did before using the the timeline on the bottom um, what we're going to do is we're doing a rendered Im animation and because it's rendered animation we are going to go to design and select render and once we are in the render just like the previous assignments we can go into our setup and we can change our scene settings we could change our appearance if we like or we could add a decal I'm going to change my scene settings here so we can follow along. So I'm going to go to setup scene settings and I'm just going to change my background color and I'm going to pick a little bit of a different color and that dialog box is not showing up on the screen here for some reason. So I'm just going to select a little bit of a different color for my background. I will select yellow, maybe a little bit darker and select OK so you can see my color has changed you could use a different background or you could use something from the environment library if you like I'm going to close that and save my file again and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select render and I'm going to use the video option and I'm going to use the cloud render I can select that at final and I'll select that resolution you're allowed 16 um, credits at a time at the, at the maximum this is only taking two so I'm going to select render and when that is complete you will see my render pop up down here so you can see it is working on that 
And once that is complete, then we will complete the motion animation um, that we had set up previously in our motion study. So my render is now complete. You can see the image appears down there. So I'm going to click on that. So it brings up this dialog box. And this is where we're going to create our motion animation. So you'll notice at the top of the dialog box here, we can download this rendered image or we can we can actually do a turntable which is kind of a spinning rotation animation but we're going to select the motion study animation so once we select the motion study animation we are limited here so you're going to see we have 16 per request 16 credits request that says 52 that means it's just uh, too high a quality. It's going to take up too much data. So we're going to select, um, we're going to leave that at standard. And our image size, we're going to have to drink, bring that down to 800 by 600. And that brings us down to 12. So it's green. That means we're good to go. And once we are done that, we're going to select render. The motion study render will take a little bit longer than the image rendering. My motion render is now complete. I'm just going to close this and you will see I have, with this background color, I have two renders in there. So I'm going to expand those. You can see this is my image and this one has a little play icon on there. So this is the motion render. I'm going to click on the plus to bring up that and that will show my render. So at this point I can play that it does look really slow, but that's not what it looks like when it's animated. So this is going to be a lot faster. So do not think that this is what your final render is going to look like. I'm just going to pause that. And now I have an option to download my animated render, select download, and I'm going to select download as motion study. And as that prepares for your download, a dialog box will pop up and tell me ask me where I want to save that so I'm going to save that in that folder there and now I can go open up that animation open up that folder and view that animation I'm just going to close this and when I want to view that I'm going to double click on my file that I downloaded and that will show my animation so you will see that is going much faster than that preview of the animation within Fusion 360. Some things you may want to consider during your render is you may want to zoom in, um, get a larger view of your render. You may want to get a different perspective. You may want to do multiple renders. Um, so we could change our views and we could go back. And although it does look black on there, uh, the rendered image will be the same a chrome top surface that I finished and we would just go through that process again render and select our 1080p make sure it's a cloud render and the final render and when that pops up down here in the bottom again we're just going to click on that and so do another render and make sure you select the motion study